What's up everyone, I'm Steve and welcome back to another episode of Millionaire Habits. This is a video I've been looking forward to recording for a long time where you're looking at somebody who lives in an earth ship in Canada. They have like a 10 kilowatt solar system and I really like looking at how different people live their lives and especially the structures that they live in to help reduce the cost of their lifestyle, live a sustainable life and that kind of thing. This is one of the coolest stories that I have seen. We went to this Earthship community right outside of Taos, Arizona a couple years ago and we got to tour all these really high-end Earthships and it's incredible how they're made. It's incredible how energy efficient they are. Those are high-end, so you're paying a lot of money for those, but not all Earthships, in fact, most Earthships aren't nearly that expensive. So let's take a look at this. It's from Exploring Alternatives, one of my favorite channels on YouTube. Let's get into this. Hey everyone, in this video, we're visiting a stunning three bedroom Earthship home in Ontario, Canada. With this Earthship, we have um, two bedrooms down this wing, and then there's a third bedroom down the other end with another living room, and I've rented that space out to uh, a friend. As you may or may not know, we also live in an off-grid house. It's not a Earthship because we don't have a greenhouse inside, but we do rely 100% on solar. We have almost three kilowatts of solar. This guy has like 10 kilowatts of solar, but we live in Arizona. We get sun all the time. Obviously in Canada, that's not necessarily the case, so he will need more in that location. So we're in the great room here, kitchens to my left and then the living room here and the space you probably notice we're both we're all walking around in bare feet and right now it's sort of summer temperatures and our feet are nice and cool. So that's one of the cool passive features about you know building with cement and our sun angle is not low so in the winter it's low when it comes in charges the floor, charges the back wall. Um, but in the summer the sun's going high and so it's not coming into the space at all. I really love cement floors, and like you just said, it's cool in the summer, but you could also heat those floors in the winter with radiant heating. So concrete floors are so versatile, it really keeps your costs down if you do it right. One of the main principles in, in our ships is, is food production. So being able to grow your own food you know, throughout the whole season inside um, is a great asset. Okay, already I'm seeing this guy is not skimping on the money he spent to build this thing. I mean, look at it. It's like a mix of, of this log cabin traditional kind of feel with these modern elements, really light colors and straight lines. And this is, this is cool. These white tubes allow you to sort of see where the standing level of the water is. And so they're, they're like a gray water holding cell. So when we wash our hands or have a shower, the water um, flushes into here before it goes out to the septic tank. So the idea behind an Earthship is you have windows along the south facing, if you're in the northern hemisphere, the south facing side of your house to allow all of that sun in to heat your house naturally. The back is typically built along a berm for insulation. You use solar typically for power and you reuse water like your, your gray water, your sink water, your shower water gets filtered into this garden usually that you have along that south facing wall the wall where the sun comes in through all those windows and you can water your plants that way and you can live off of the things that you grow inside the house with the water that you're already using for your sinks and showers. But yeah, it's been great to be able to grow our own food and just come out here and pick it as needed in the kitchen and, and it's, it's super fun. So that is what makes an Earthship an Earthship. Growing your own food using the water that you've already used at your sinks and showers before it gets out into your septic system, which is your wastewater holding tank. It's not just living off grid, it's growing your own stuff. And if we did that out here, we would be growing the heck out of cilantro and jalapenos, maybe some tomatoes. There's, there's a lot that you can grow in a greenhouse like that. When we catch the water off the roof and, and flush the toilet, that we have two options basically. We're always typically flushing the rainwater and using that to flush our poop and pee out to the septic bed. Oh yes, rainwater, rain collection, something we can't really do all that well out here in Arizona because especially right now, it never 
rains. But in Canada, it does rain. So you can use your roof or any kind of water catchment structure on your property to catch that rain, funnel it into a freshwater holding tank, and that's the water you use inside. So it comes from the clouds down onto your roof, into your house, your showers, your sinks, down into your greenhouse, and then finally out to your septic system. That whole process is uber sustainable. And once it's all set up, your costs are virtually nil. All right, let's keep watching. We have the ability to also hook onto town water. So if I didn't have enough rainwater sitting in my um, tank in the back, then, and I wasn't able to flush the toilet and nothing was happening or filling up, then I would just switch this line to the town line. So that's interesting. He has rain collection, but he also has city water straight to his house. And that's where it kind of gets into a gray area that, yeah, you're off grid, but you're not, but you're still connected to city water if you need it. And he's probably paying a base fee every month to have that water straight to his house. So that's a little bit of a gray area, but it is nice. It is nice to have that backup. So the convenience about heating water and then putting it into the floor is that your floors are thermal mass. So then it's working in conjunction with the sun. So still in the garage, this is where our electrical um, sort of grid feed system comes into the house. And so the solar panels are right above us here. And basically this sends it the power um, back to the grid. The solar panels I put in are a 10 kilowatt system and they cost around 30 or $40,000 to put in because I had to have a, a racking system to hold them on a certain angle. That is important to note. Solar is great. We have solar here on site too. It's awesome, but it's a big upfront cost. He said he paid 30 or 40 grand. We paid about 25 or so for our system. So it's big, big upfront cost. But once you have it installed, once all of those components are in place, that's when you really start to make up your money quickly. But it sounds like this guy is connected to the grid anyway. He's doing a grid tie system where he feeds back into the grid or he can pull from the grid if, if he's not getting enough solar. So he has city water to his property and he has a grid tie to his property. So not exactly 100% off grid, but still pretty cool. So we're at the back of the Collingwood our ship and we're just back here to kind of show you some of the uh, features. So the back um, has these two cisterns that are buried in the earth. So this is what I was talking about when I when I said that the back of our ships are typically built into a berm or a high point on the land. That provides a lot of insulation and that's typically where a lot of your accessories, your utilities are. The other thing that we're pretty proud of is just all our rock work. It was something that I learned along the way was building with rocks and, and cement and, and so it's been kind of fun to repurpose like field stone, granite field stone into the walls and kind of make it uh, look even more earthy. That's one of the coolest things about Earthships. These rock walls, or sometimes you'll have walls with bottles in them, so you can kind of see through it's translucent, and the bottles might be different colors, like blues and oranges or whatever, and it's real. that is one of the coolest parts about Earthships in general, just how unique everything is, and the resources that you use to build everything. People get really, really creative with this stuff. Back here we can even see the cooling tubes that go through the berm basically. So it's a 10 inch tube that goes 15 feet through the berm and then enters each of the rooms have either one or two of these cooling tubes. And in the front of the house, um, in the greenhouse, we've got whirly birds, which are an out vent uh, that we open those vents at the top and then have these ones open up down low. And so that's how we passively cool the house in, in the summer. Yeah, passive cooling is a really cool concept where you essentially vent the hot air that's gonna naturally rise to the top of your house out and you recycle that air with cooler air that's through the cooling tubes that he was talking about underneath the berm. Air there will be closer to the temperature of the air underneath the surface, which is a lot cooler typically than the ambient air in the summer. So that kind of, so that cycle just happens naturally without any real power. The vents at the top might use a little power just as like a exhaust fan that you might find in your bathroom. So it's very, very little power, but very effective. 
When I was younger and growing up, I just really wanted to give back to the environment and, and just was really environmentally conscious and in school I just took recreation leadership so I was like being outside and I knew that this type of building that you know used recycled bottles and cans and reused tires like it just has to be a good thing. The other thing that hooks a lot of people is is the fact that they think oh it's it's a cheap way to build too because you're recycling all these things and so yeah it can be cheap it can be done cheap um, but it also takes a lot of labor so pounding of the tires like for example collecting probably took a month or two and then the pounding took another two or three months i love this story i love what he's doing but there's a lot that goes in to building an earthship it can be cheaper but like he said there's going to be a lot that goes into building it through the tires and the cans and the bottles so you're using stuff that just is already there so you're not producing Producing more necessarily to build your house, but it's going to take a lot to put all of those components together and get the solar system in and get your passive cooling system installed. And you have to just kind of understand how all of that works. And if you don't understand that, it's probably going to be a learning process. But I still think there's a lot of value in at least understanding Earthships and how things are happening with these off-grid homes and how you might be able to make your home a little bit more sustainable, which means it's going to be cheaper for you in the short term as well as the long term. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. If you liked it, subscribe if you aren't already. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.